Here's your Forbes Daily Briefing for Thursday, April 4th. Today on Forbes, the world's richest person 2024. For the second year running, luxury goods magnate Bernard Arnault is the richest person in the world, ranking number one on Forbes' World's Billionaires list, which was released earlier this week. He's $22 billion richer than in 2023, thanks to yet another record year for his luxury goods conglomerate, LVMH, which owns an empire of 75 coveted brands, including Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, and Sephora. The group announced $16.5 billion in net profit on $94 billion revenues for 2023, sending its stock 5% higher over the past year. The 75-year-old tycoon has an estimated $233 billion fortune on the annual Forbes list, giving him a $38 billion lead over his closest challenger, Elon Musk, who retained second place this year. That gap is wider than last year, when he outpaced Musk by $31 billion. While Musk's high-profile tribulations in 2023 dented his wealth, most notably when a Delaware judge voided his 2018 award of Tesla stock options in January, Arnault had a much better 12 months. In April 2023, LVMH became the first European company to reach a market capitalization of $500 billion. This year marks Arnault's 28th consecutive appearance on Forbes' World's Billionaires ranking. He first made the cut in 1997 with an estimated $3.1 billion fortune. That number, adjusted for inflation, would be about $6 billion today, meaning Arnault has added more than $200 billion to his net worth thanks to the growth of LVMH over the past two decades. He quickly climbed the ranks, vaulting into the top 20 richest by 2005, worth $17 billion, and then becoming the world's fourth richest in 2011, worth $41 billion. His fortune took a gigantic leap in 2018, rising to $72 billion from the prior year's $41.5 billion, though he still ranked number four. In 2023, he overtook Elon Musk to become the world's richest person on Forbes' yearly list for the first time. While known for pricey acquisitions of luxury retailers, including Tiffany & Co., and collaborations with high-profile stars like Rihanna and her Fenty Beauty, LVMH made fewer deals last year. It bought a majority stake in Chateau Minuti, the second-largest producer of rosé wines in France's southern Provence region, and picked up Los Angeles-based luxury eyewear maker Barton Pereira in November. A month later, it sold 80% of cruise line operator, starboard and onboard cruise services to a group of private investors. The transaction amounts were not disclosed for those deals. Mid a quieter year, Arnaud moved to cement his succession plan, which is to say, to keep family control. In January, he proposed adding his sons, Alexandra and Frederic, to LVMH's board, where they would join his two eldest children, Antoine and Delphine, Shareholders will vote to approve or reject the nominations on April 18th. That plan builds on an earlier move he made in 2022, when he reorganized his holding company, Agache, to give equal stakes to his five children. The kids' control of Agache, which owns most of the family's shares in LVMH, combined with their presence on LVMH's board, ensures that the Arnauds will maintain control over the world's largest luxury empire for years to come. Forbes attributes the value of all the family's LVMH shares to Arnaud rather than to his children, given his control over the company. If all goes to plan, the Arnaud children will carry on their father's legacy. Frédéric Arnaud, the second youngest of his children and the CEO of LVMH's watches division, told Forbes in 2019, quote, Our father is very competitive. He doesn't like losing. This is something he's transmitted to us. For full coverage, check out Giacomo Tagnini's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.